coming up this week on Archer's Choice. I'm gonna pull Freddy and cry. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Love you too. Welcome to Archer's Choice. I'm Vicky, and hey, that's Ralph. stop. <laughs> Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. This week, we are going elk hunting in Colorado. That's right. We're going Winterhawk Outfitters way up on the, on the, in the wilderness. Yep. Riding the horses. Gary is going, Gary Smoot is going for his, fir, him and Kevin. His first elk hunt. His first elk hunt. Yep, and we also have Sage later on yep. on his first elk hunt also. And our lucky logo, well, guess what? It's new archery products, so NAP, watch for it. Spitfires, Thunderheads, Hellraisers. Quick Fletch, all of them. Anyways, keep your eyes open for it, and in the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do with it. In the meantime, we've got some great elk hunting footage and some new friends that we met yes, here. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's been a long drive. Me and Kevin have been in the car for well, getting close to 20 hours. Kevin and me are finally making it into Denver and we're looking up at the Rocky Mountains for the first time and I'm thinking to myself, man, the exercise and the preparation that we did back here at the, you know, the very high hills in Illinois just isn't really going to cut it. But uh, Kevin and me stopped in a uh, local Walmart, picked our tags up, then headed the rest of the way out to meet, uh, meet up with Larry at the trailhead. Larry took us the rest of the way in because the road is a little bumpy and kind of narrow in spots as Larry showed us with a truck down in the valley there, but uh, Larry got us there safely. And uh, you know, coming into camp, it was um, it was a lot more than I actually expected. The the actual base camp that Larry has, Larry's been doing this for over 25 years, and he has got his base camp just tweaked. We stayed uh, in uh, wall tents, you know, with cots. Uh, he had a he had a great uh, cook tent or building almost, I would say and then uh, his corral and his tack tent. I mean, he just has everything laid out perfect. Me and Kevin were able to, uh, you know, just double check all our gear once we got there, make sure everything was safe and ready to go, still spot on. Like I said, he's been doing it for 25 years. He knows what he's doing. Elk bugled right up here. And Dave thinks we gotta go give it a shot. I think he's pretty close. We got a shot at him before dark. Time bit us, the temperature cooled down, the thermals dropped, and our wind was going right over the top of them. So when the thermals dropped, it just dropped right, right down in front of that cow. I'm gonna get me one of them things. Get set up. Get set up. Right here. It's, it's frustrating um, as cameraman and hunter for both of us uh, because especially when that bull hit our wind and he stopped behind that tree it. broadside to Kevin, I know he just wanted me to say, let it go, and I couldn't. And as a team, man, that just, it's frustrating.
I mean, if we didn't have the camera, that bull would be dead. I mean, it's that simple. Five yards, seven yards, just on the other side of this pine. Do you see him? It's a good bull. Yeah. Was he a five by? It's, you know, you know what it takes to, to let him go like that. That was awesome, though. I mean, right there, let it, whatever that is, it's eight yards. To that tree, maybe. He was just on the other side of that tree. Don't go away. When we come back, it's Sage and Hoppy. You know the Florida boys, and they're elk hunting in Colorado. You don't want to miss this. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Well, you know what? That's elk hunting. You know the wind swirls. They're gone. Now we're going to share with you. Ooh, don't kick me. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to join Sage Kemper. Which you remember some Sage? Of you might remember Sage. I mean, we started. We knew Sage when he was about five years old. It's Hoppy's son from down in Florida. I was taller than him then. You were taller than him. Yes. And now he's on his first elk hunt. And wait to see what happens. This is the best thing about getting kids involved. Wait to see. And Dad Hoppy is filming. So check this one out. We have cows, cow elk everywhere. I can hear them cracking the timber. I think he's going to do it. Smoked him at 40 yards. <laughs> right there. <laughs> he can come up here. He's 20, 20 yards right there. And he didn't see me draw back, but I had it. I was level one by sight. And I went like that. And he saw, well, that went out there and dad squealed. Put my 40 yard pin on him. Hit him in the, in their blood. It was coming down here. You gotta give a lot of credit to Hoppy. Yeah. You know, he takes his kids out and he teaches them all about the outdoors. He gets them hunting and being at the right place at the right time. A lot of people call it luck, but truly, when you understand where the game's feeding, and those, those animals, those elk are feeding out in the big pastures, they're working their way back to the bedding area, keep that wind in your favor, intercept them in that, tra in that transit zone, things are gonna happen. You see? We yeah. you too, buddy. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. All the hard practicing and yeah. All the homework. Yeah. Home I'm talking about school homework that you uh -oh. had to get <laughs> done so you could come on this trip. It was worth yeah. it, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. Well guys, this was Sage's first elk hunt. First morning out. We went yesterday afternoon. A bull about this size we, we had come in. Nice 505, this is a good bull for your first one, buddy. Are you happy? Yeah. Love you, buddy. Love you too. Time for this week's Bow Hunting World Magazine Tip of the Week. One of the biggest questions we're asked is, how do you charge all your equipment, especially in the wilderness areas where you can't take a generator, where there is really no power? Well, there's two ways. You've got solar, and now you have portable power. These little power packs are unbelievable. What it is, is you charge this up before you even leave for your trip. You have this now, it's just storing the energy. They've got a little 110 converter, you plug all this in, you put your charger on this, boom, and you've got it. The big thing here is a lot of these areas, you can't have any generators, you can't have any motors or anything. 
This little pack weighs about three and a half, four pounds. We've had it for 21 days and it's kept all of our equipment running. Put your iPods, your sat phones, your camera batteries, anything you're looking for, it's gonna do it. That is your Bowhunting World Tip of the Week. Don't change that dial, when we come back, Kevin is gonna give it a second try. Sage, Hoppy, we are so proud of you guys. How you cool is that? You rock, Sage. Congratulations on your first elk. You know, and Hoppy knows, I mean, he, he's got all the kids, you know, hunting. And that's, Hop, thank you, because that is our future. Now let's go join Kevin and Gary. Again. At Winterhawk, as they're still trying. The experience of basically leaving camp and being gone all day was well, it was, it was really different for me. Midday, it's a good time just to sit down, take a little break. Dave, our guide, also taught us to take our boots and socks off and dry them out. You basically never stop hunting. sitting there and watching that cow come by us. We're, me and Kevin are sure, this is it. This is the real deal. This bull is gonna come in. He's only 30 yards off to our left. And then to have that cow either catch our wind or catch something that she didn't like and head back and it was over. to cry out of just blah. <laughs> ah. That was a close call. We've been sitting here for about an hour now. We've got animals up on top that we've seen. They've cut across. And what are we doing? We're just waiting for the for the wind to drop and start coming coming down. The hill. The yep. sun will start to disappear and the thermals will start to drop. So. So once that happens, we're gonna head up and try to get a setup on these guys. It's just being patient is the tough part. Yeah, tell me about it.
got him. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. This is it. We're going to see if Gary can if close the deal do you think he can? with Winterhawk. Oh. Let's see if he can actually do it, shall we? What happened was, is that bull had come across. Dave was back here behind us. And when I turned around to do the interview to tell you what was going on, he walked back out. Here comes Dave. He was standing right up there. And when he came across, instead of cutting down, he cut up and kept going. And then this guy started sounding off up here when you came across. And so I turned to do an interview real quick to say what was going on. And all of a sudden he goes, he's over your shoulder at 35 yards. Yeah. I. I heard him up here. I knew he got on that side. So I had the quick, I had the switch to try to bring him back. Yeah. And then he, I, I could see him the whole time. I saw him booger. Yep. He, he, call, he right boogered and he stopped right up there. Yeah. I got on calls right away and he, he just gave you one last chance. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, we'll just take a second and calm our nerves. Give, give him a little bit. Couple hours. Here. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Hey Gary, we're pretty proud of you. We knew that that was going to be a pretty rough hunt going out there. We've been out there before and that's some pretty steep terrain and some high elevation and from being from Illinois also, I can understand what you were sucking wind on out there. Congratulations buddy. We are really proud of you back here at ACM. Oh God. <laughs> Very rewarding. I'm going to pull up Freddie and cry. <laughs> <sighs> this was the um, most mentally and physically difficult hunt I've been on. And it was worth every second. Did good. Thank you, buddy. Awesome. Thank you much. To be able to go elk hunting for the very first time and then to actually bring an elk home, to a point you almost go with the expectation that you're not going to actually get an elk. You're going for the opportunity and I can't put into words how that makes me feel as far as an accomplishment. Hey Gary, way to go, buddy. How cool is that? Congratulations, that was awesome. Kevin, great filming. <laughs> Laura, Larry, thanks so much for having the guys come up to Winterhawk. I mean, they experienced elk hunting like it really should and be. And in the true wilderness. I mean, that's a wilderness area, so there's no generators. There's no nothing. No, no four-wheelers. Awesome. It's all horses, mules, and that's it. And a willpower. And the willpower, absolutely. And they figured so, out what that was. <laughs> you're not kidding. If you happen to see the new Archery Product logo, which NAP, was the Lucky baby. logo. Making it happen in the field. Click on archerschoice.com. Click on it, yeah, Click type it, it in. Click on the Lucky Logo button. Fill out the information and someone's going to win some great stuff from new archery products as well as some other great things. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So next week, well, guess what? We're, br we're bringing it back to the Midwest. We're bringing it back for Whitetail Buffet Show. Buffet. You're Buffett. still doing that after 10 years? Buffet. Buffet, I'm, Buffet I'm, is when you knock someone over. That's I'm gonna what go Buffet is. I'm going to go talk to my friends here. You go right ahead. Yep, yeah, Thanks whatever. for watching this week's show. We'll see you same time next week, same channel, right here on The Archer's Choice. <laughs>